negative thoughts in your mind that you aren't good enough, that you'll never be successful? If so, you're not alone. I've had those thoughts playing in my mind ever since I took the leap to become an entrepreneur. It's a dirty, dark secret that no one likes to talk about as the glamorization of becoming an entrepreneur is shown in the media. I realized that in order to succeed, I needed help. We all do. So I decided to go all in on myself, spending thousands of hours in the trenches, reading, joining groups, listening to podcasts, hiring coaches to develop a bulletproof morning routine for success. Join me on my journey as together we build our morning fire to ignite our lives as entrepreneurs. My name is Jeff Wickersham, and this is the Morning Fire for Entrepreneurs podcast. Welcome to the Morning Fire for Entrepreneurs podcast. I'm extremely excited to have special guest on the show today, Jamie Coleman. Jamie, welcome to the show. Hello, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to dive in. Yes, me too. Me too. So let's get into uh, let's get into state. I know you have a five and a half month year, five and a half month old in the other room, but we're going to do some power breathing and then a, a power boom to get us started. So let's go ahead and do three breaths. We're going to breathe in and out. Good. Another breath in and out. Final breath in and out. All right, I'm going to count down, y'all, three, two, one, and I'm going to yell boom at the top of my lungs. You don't need to since I don't want you to wake the sleeping baby in the next room. But three, two, one, and boom. There you go. Awesome. Awesome, Jamie. So let's get right into it. I eat, sleep, and breathe, morning habits, rituals, routines. What are one or two things that you do each and every day that sets you down that path towards success? Well, I was actually trying to think this morning, what is the one thing over everything else that I find to be the most important thing to do in the morning? And I realized that it's actually waking up early. It's because without that, what tends to happen is your day gets pulled away from you extremely fast, especially me now as a new mama. If I don't wake up before the baby, I'm woken up to a screaming baby. And so that would be number one is waking up early. And then I love to start Secondly, with meditation. So just really getting my mind right and centered for the rest of the day. Awesome. I love that. And I, I, I love how you thought about it and said, you know what? It's waking up early because I always tell folks, listen, I get up pretty darn early. I get up at 4 a.m. five days a week and people are like, how, how am I going to do that? And I always just say, and to your point, you've got a young baby. You just want to get up a little bit earlier than that one. Obviously, sleep is, is at a premium, but waking up early just gives you that that opportunity, I feel, to take control of your day right at that point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Explain to me a little bit about the meditation. Do you do guided meditation? Do you do it on your own? Yeah, I've been doing guided. I just find that that really helps me slow down. I find if I try doing it on my own, a lot of times I speed up the process a little bit more. And so maybe I'll get to that point in the future. But for now, guided is best for me at this point. And how long have you been uh, meditating? Ooh, I, every morning, I would say now I'm hitting about four months. And so I really, I mean, I feel different on the days where I even let myself sleep in a little bit. I feel like I don't have enough time to allow myself my morning routine. And so that's where I'm like, these two go so hand in hand together just to set your day up for success. Yeah, and I, I do guided meditation. I'm three years plus straight and I still Ooh. do guided meditation because I feel like my mind wanders. And when I have someone speaking to me and saying, come back, center on your breath, do those important things, breathe. It allows me to channel my mind a little bit better. I feel like if I was sitting there by myself trying to breathe, it would go, my mind would go every which way. So totally, oh, totally too. right there with you. Yeah, absolutely. We need that, that guiding force, I think. And then just a reminder as well as to why you're there, maybe setting an intention for your day as well. It's just a constant, constant reminder. And it's just someone to keep you out of your own way. Yeah, absolutely. And then, so being a new mom, congratulations. I, I know you you were, were awarded uh, on the list for Yahoo Finance Top Mompreneurs for 2021. Tell me a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey and, uh, and where you're at now. I'm sure it's a great story. Yeah. So I actually started my first business when I was 15 years old. 
And I was keeping automotive parts in circulation out of the landfill. So that opened me up to the whole world of entrepreneurship and passive income. And after that, uh, when I found out I was pregnant, I started coaching other moms and helping them start businesses because I realized so many of them wanted to be able to stay at home with their kids, but they either had to sacrifice their career or being a stay at home mama. But I quickly realized doing this, that having one on one clients wasn't scalable. It, it um, started taking up more and more in my time. And I realized that it really wasn't in line with why I was doing this, which was, you know, to be with my family and to live my best life with with the people that I love. And I started to realize that I was jeopardizing everything that I had built this for. And so through my pregnancy and now with a five month old, my whole aim there was to start freeing myself from the depths of my business, which meant setting up different systems and processes for more of like the freedom aspect. And then that opened up a whole new side of my business to where I realized so many entrepreneurs start businesses for freedom. And that's just very surface level, right? That's the surface level. Why? But within the depths of that, they start their business for one thing and then they end up self-employed. And so now my whole business has shifted and it's just, it's incredible what a journey this has been truly. That's, that's amazing. And I, I love how you, articulated that where so many people that start their own company want that freedom, but then they become self-employed and they're tied to the business. They can never take a vacation. They can never do more than what, if they were working for somebody previously, they could do, right? Take two weeks of vacation, three weeks of vacation. They, they can't do that. And it's so important to have the, the processes and systems in place for your business. Can, can you dive into that process a little bit deeper because I'm sure people are listening and wondering, okay, th th that's me in a nutshell, right? I'm self-employed. I'm, I'm in my business daily. How do I get out of it a little bit? Yeah. Well, I found that a lot of times what entrepreneurs is they make they make three mistakes typically. And the first one would be you usually working with one-on-one -on -one clients or only in group programs. And so what happens there is they're not able to have a streamlined process or a signature offer. And so the solution there is really coming up with a signature program that's unique to you. So it's like your secret sauce in a way. So it's de developing your own program would be first off. Secondly, you know, the second mistake is really just not developing processes in your business and you might have them and not even realize it but it's understanding that systems are your business and by you developing processes that remove you from those systems that's where you can truly start to free yourself as an entrepreneur because it starts to work without you and i found a lot of times what entrepreneurs like what what happens is that we're unable to shut it off so it could be six 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. on a Wednesday night and we're sitting with our family at dinner and sometimes we just we have business on our mind because if we're not working, the business isn't working. And so systems allow you to know that your business is working so you can shut it off when you're not. And then thirdly is really just setting your business up to scale. And what that means for me is having a digital product that as acts as a buffer between you and the customer. And so it basically pre-vets them and sells them into your high ticket program without it taking up any of your time. So those are that's basically my three-phase system, what I walk my clients through. And it really develops them into more of a CEO rather than just a self-employed entrepreneur. Yeah, and I, I think if you want to get out of that self-employed entrepreneur, <coughs> excuse me, having those systems in place you already do them, but if you ever want to offload them to a virtual assistant, for example, you need to have those built so you can move them very easily. So if you're you're building your business, have that future state in mind of, yes, this is a task I need to do today because of what the circumstances are. But in the future, I want to have somebody else to, to take that over. Is that, that kind of where you're in line with, with number two there? Exactly. And it really doesn't even need to involve bringing on a team at all. A lot of times it's just use, using like these apps and systems that are already there virtually or online, uh, but setting them up correctly. A lot of times people will download them or bring them into their business without ever really taking the time to make sure they're actually streamlined. And so that's a big part of it as well. Awesome. What And you, you mentioned apps, right? Technology is such a powerful tool. What are a couple go-to ones that you leverage to really automate your, your business? Well, so since we're on a podcast, I'll bring up the podcasting app that I like to use, which is Asana. 
And it's really like setting up a good board for yourself that really helps. <laughs> I need everything written in front of me. And I found before when I was using just a pen and paper, if I made one little error on there, I felt like I had to redo the whole entire sheet. <laughs> I don't know. So Asana just makes it so you can easily uh, like kind of brain dump everything and then bring it through a process on its own. And you can add team members to it. So everybody stays in the loop. It's just a really good way to stay organized in my opinion. Okay. Asana, do you have a, do you have one more that you like to leverage? Ooh. I would say for anybody listening who has clients uh, or even a podcast as well, I have a podcast flow in Dubsado. Uh, basically with the click of a button, you can go and just have an entire workflow send out that sends out contracts, invoices, uh, documents, any type of documents that you need to send out in your business. So with one click of a button rather than back and forth emails, they even have a scheduling tool as well, which is really helpful. Awesome. Love it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing both of those. So let's get back to your why. You touched on it a little bit, right? Of, of as you were pregnant and, and really in the business, you, you figured out, hey, I, I want to get back to the core of, of your why. So let's talk a little bit about how people can find their why, because so many times I, I feel like it's it can be a great experience, like the, the birth of, of your son, or in my experience, it was the death of my mother six and a half years ago to breast cancer. And I tra I changed that, transformed that pain into power. And I found yeah. my why, but so many people struggle with that. So what, what are a couple strategies and ways that, that people can dive deep and, and find their why? Yeah. Well, and I would love to even start with the realization, if you are a business owner and you've found your why previously, is making sure that you're constantly revisiting that. And you can start by really just, I mean, it's, it's kind of surface level. And I learned this from Dean Graziosi originally, it's a seven levels deep exercise. And so he starts with asking, what does success mean to you? Or, or what would my life look like if I was successful now? And like most people will say like time and financial freedom, right? That's typically what they see when they think of success. Uh, but going deeper seven levels, you basically just continuously ask yourself, okay, well, why is that important to you? Why is time and financial freedom important to you? And you answer that question. And then each time you just try to dig deeper until the purpose of this is to get to the core reason of why you want something. And for me, that was to live the life that I love with the people that I love, right? And to live my best life. And in my opinion, the only way I can do that is when I have absolute control, which means having my own business, setting my own schedule and really living without sacrifice. But in my opinion, like this huge shift that happened here was I realized that as an entrepreneur, I started to be so consumed by the how, the how to do this, how to do that. And actually the implementation of me feeling like I needed to take the thing that I've learned and actually do it inside my business. And now what I've realized is that there's two sides to something. There's understanding the how, and then there's actually implementing it. And so I believe as an entrepreneur, you should always understand the how, but that does not mean you need to do it. It means that you should automate, delegate, or eliminate it, right? So it's really, it's really just knowing your why, understanding it, and then making sure that your actions every single day are in alignment with your why. Like seriously, you guys figure out your why and like plaster it, plaster it above your desk if you have to, because you need a reminder. You need to remember why you're doing this every single day, or it's easy to get hung up in the trenches of your business. And that's where, you know, it's easy to give up because you didn't build something that you actually are passionate with. You didn't build an aligned business. And so it's just really important to make sure that you're doing that every single day. Yeah. And I totally agree with you. One on that exercise that, that, Dean, and, and I'm a fan of Dean's as, as well, and it can get deeply emotional when you're asking yourself why over and over again, and you're drilling down into some deep emotion, but, but you need that, that fire. You need to, to be able to have that to pull you through those, those down times and those dark times. I also love the visual reminder tip that you gave, right? Having things all around you to remind you of why you're doing it, because to your point, the day will happen. Life happens. We're bombarded by how many different bits and pieces of information, emails, text, social media, all this stuff. It's, it's very easy to your point to get lost in the shuffle. Uh, so those, those were, were great, great tips, Jamie, you, you mentioned a little bit setting your schedule. So I always like to ask this question because I am very diligent with my schedule and who schedules time on my calendar. 
what what are a couple of things you leverage for from a scheduling perspective? Do you batch content together? Do you only have certain days where you're speaking to clients? How, how do you leverage your schedule so it's most efficient? Yeah, batching is huge, honestly. Uh, without batching, I didn't batch for a long time. And looking back now, I realize like how big of a mistake that was because um, I found myself always behind. We're now batching. I can make sure I'm three months ahead if I want to be. And so I batch Instagram content, Facebook content, videos, podcasts, everything. So I'm at least a month ahead. And now with the new baby, I have to say I'm kind of guilty of not being that far ahead right now. But in a perfect world, I'd be three months ahead with everything. Uh, but it just really makes it clear I mean, I love to go in 90 day sprints as far as my business is concerned. So basically what that could mean for you is having a clear understanding of where you are today and then knowing 90 days from now where you actually want to be and then kind of working backwards and building yourself a roadmap out. So when you're planning content for three months in advance, you can make sure that you're really in line every single day and you know what you're supposed to do, because as an entrepreneur, it's very easy to, you know, forget where you should be showing up every single day to move the needle. So. That's important. I, I like that 90 day sprint and then backing it up and, and chunking things up because so many times we put goals out there that are a year goal and it's this grand stretch, big audacious goal. And we don't chunk it up enough where the mind mm -hmm. sees that it's doable in small bits and pieces. And, and that's where so many folks I see getting stuck because they've got this big audacious goal but they don't say, okay, what are the daily actions I need to take, weekly actions I need to take to move the needle to get there? And, and what happens is the mind says, I don't even know how we're going to do there, that. And when the mind is confused, it will stop you dead in your tracks and you won't move. Yep, exactly. And I feel like that all stems from a morning routine. I mean, really, and that's why I love your podcast so much is because without that, I feel like, I mean, success is hard to achieve if you don't start your day intentionally. Absolutely. And I, we were, we were just in a uh, men's group that I run. We were just reading extreme ownership by Jocko Wilnick. And, and he's like the, the one opportunity, the first opportunity you get to take control and have a win is getting up with your alarm clock and not mm -hmm. hitting the snooze button. And it's undervalued. People think they're getting quality sleep, but that is the first opportunity to say, you know what? Yes, I'm taking control of my life. And I'm not going to hit the snooze button and I'm getting up and I'm, I'm moving. And I feel like it's the foundation for everything. It absolutely is. And I have to say, too, if you're going to if you're going to follow with a meditation, I recommend doing it sitting up uh, because this morning I almost fell asleep during mine. And that's the one way to kind of <laughs> ruin what you had started by getting up early. Yes, I've, I've done that, too, before. And that's one of the reasons why I actually do like 10 minutes of exercise before I meditate. Mm -hmm. So I've got the blood flowing. And then I can sit and I don't fall asleep because I'm, I'm, I've now got that natural energy, uh, energy working through. Jamie, I, I love all these, uh, all these strategies and tips. Do you have something you want to share with, uh, with my listening and watching audience? Yeah, um, I would definitely love to say if you guys are interested in what we're talking about or, you know, have started a business, you're feeling overworked, overwhelmed, maybe even burnt out. I mean, definitely shoot over Instagram. You can find me, Jamie Coleman. That's J-A-M-I-E-K-U-L-L-M-A-N. I post a lot of things on my feed there. And then I have links to the podcast and everything like that. I host Mom's Free to Maker podcast. But I would love to also share something I learned from Rob Dial of the Mindset Mentor podcast, because I feel to really, truly understand, you know, even implementing a morning routine is really a deep dive into where you currently are today and understanding, like, am I actually staying true to my why? So if you guys are listening to this and you're like, oh, am I living like up to my life potential of how I should be? Uh, so Rob Dial calls this the Cripes Life Audit. And so... I, I just recommend that you take a few minutes and go through this. It's basically a deep dive into your career, relationships, intellectual, physical, and uh, emotional well-being. And you're just giving yourself a grade of your life. And you might be shocked at um, the grade that you give yourself in your current positioning. 
with your life. And so that's a good kind of a life audit right there that you can take. And I have a, a freebie that actually helps you find this. And that can be found on my Instagram as well. It's uh, one of the links that's right up there in the profile. So it's going to help you figure out your life audit. And it's actually called does your life pass the test. And then further than that, it's going to help you actually find your why. So if you are looking to find your why and really do a deep dive there, this is the freebie for you. <laughs> Awesome, Jamie. I, I so appreciate you being on the show. Of course. Thank you so much for having me, Jeff. You're welcome. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks for listening. Have an amazing rest of your day. Rise, fight, love, repeat. Get after it, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Morning Fire for Entrepreneurs podcast. You now have the knowledge, but without action, knowledge is useless. Choose to act. Choose to step into your greatness and unlock that hero inside of you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave a review so more entrepreneurs can hear this message. If you absolutely love this podcast, which I hope you do, then share it up with someone you know who might see benefit from it. Become that beacon of change and together we can impact the world.